Hi, and welcome to your last little session with me. Well, today I'm going to be talking about protecting yourself. And this is kind of a nice way to say this is the last session because before you leave and when you have a friend, you say, hey, take care, right? Well, before I leave, I have to tell you protect yourself. And in this case, you know, in computers, we have to take care of ourselves in two different ways. We have to take care of ourselves in hardware and in software. And I will be talking about both ways of taking care of yourself. So let's get to it. So first of all, I am going to be talking about restricting access, which by definition will be, uh, well, the, the first thing that we can think of is physical security, which will be the hardware side of it, right? So for this, I'm going to give you a couple of examples of things that we can do. And one of it is fingerprint scanners and iris scanners is the second one. In regards to fingerprint scanners, we're already kind of well versed on that because many of many computers that we own nowadays, they can scan your fingerprint. And it's quite convenient, I have to say, I used to own one computer that I used to just, you know, pass my fingerprint and it was really good because I didn't have to remember anything except bring my finger, right? And in regards to iris scanners, they are a little bit more sophisticated, so we don't get to see them in everyday kind of hardware, yet we get to see them in different places and different uh, offices, okay? So the one thing that I wanna emphasize here with enhancing physical security is that is uh, you cannot store a million dollar server, I'm, I'm exaggerating, right? But a very expensive server that has a lot of functionality and it's beefed up, you know, and it's very secure, you cannot secure that with a $10 lock, okay? So what you wanna have is something that matches what you're protecting. If you're protecting something that it's quite important, then you have to enhance your physical security. And with that, you know, just like the guy in there, you need, uh, secur you need security. Security people, secure doors, thick glass, not just any glass that somebody can throw a hammer and that's it. No, something that it's actually bulletproof. Okay, and no, I'm not kidding, you know, security is very important. So let's continue. So other things that you can do is, you know, protect the software. For this, we could have security suites and we could have firewalls. Now, this kind of security, as I said, this is the kind that you don't really see, that you cannot touch, but yet is there. So in a way, it's security that it's taken care of by the, by the um, server itself, right? The server or the network in itself, you have the, the firewall or you have the security suites that you are implementing and that you should have, or as an employee, you should follow them and use those security suites and be, sh be sure to um, use your firewall appropriately, not trying to bypass it because then just like you do or, or get um, ways to go around it because just like you do, somebody else could follow suit and then, you know, get around the firewall and uh, get in. And an example of this is like, let's say you you always have to go around and there is so many credentials that you have to show in order to get access to a particular, um, you know, to something in particular. And you're like, well, you know, I don't wanna do that. But if I connect a modem here at the office where nobody knows, and then from my, from my home, I can access through the modem and then I'll get around all that security that is just, uh, then you can do it. So if you do something like that, just keep in mind that you are placing something that it's gonna, that it's undermining the security of the, uh, the place where you're working and the same way that you go in, anybody else can. Because believe me, hackers are at the lookout for any way that they can actually hack into people's stuff. So be very careful and respect whatever policies and whatever software and hardware is being placed for you to protect you. Because remember, right now we're thinking about protecting ourselves. So let's continue. So how can we restrict access? When a uh, good thing is to use strong passwords and firewalls. We talk about firewalls and in a previous uh, class I talk about making, we actually talk about making stronger passwords, creating stronger passwords. And uh, you need to change passwords when people leave your company. 
Now, what I'm trying to say here is that as soon as somebody leaves the company because they were fired or because they decided to move on to another place, you got to make sure that you disable their accounts, but immediately, almost before they actually leave the premises, okay? And you have to have people and policies in place to execute that right away. Or if you are the one that it's going to, you know, that it's leaving, you have to consider that three minutes after you're gone, whatever you had inside there is gone as well. Okay, so you will not have access because a lot of these gruntle employees, you know, somebody that got fired, somebody that is unhappy, you know, and or is leaving because uh, better, greener pastures, you know, they have to be careful that those people don't come back and do something bad. Okay, now you have to use stronger passwords because I, in this particular slide, I put a dictionary to tell you that whatever is in the dictionary is probably not very safe, okay? So that's why you combine different letters, I mean different words, two or three together, like the passphrase that I talk about with you, or you could use uh, letters and numbers and signs and those things that are not really in the dictionary. You see, those are your modifications. So when you're thinking of your next password, think, can I find this password in the dictionary? And the answer is yes, then think of another password, okay? Let's continue. So you gotta protect your data. First of all, you have to think ahead. What if, what if is very important? If something wrong, if something goes wrong, what are you gonna do? And the policies have to be in place much before anything bad happens. And if anything, if you have any data loss of anything like that, you have to always back up in remote locations. My best example for this is airlines. Okay, if anything goes wrong, they don't have data only in one server. They are constantly backing up because anything happens, the airline, you know, you're in a particular, uh, you know, something goes wrong in one of the airline servers, people are not gonna wait around to make a reservation or to cancel a flight or anything like that within your airline, for example. And that actually applies for any travel agencies or things like that. Now, in regards to disasters and backing up in different locations, I want to remind you of, of the disaster that happened when the uh, Hamilton li Library got inundated, you know, and it was a lot of, you know, there was a lot of water and it ruined all the books and it ruined a lot of things. It was horrible. But the one thing that, uh, that I saw firsthand was some of my colleagues over there lost their information because their computers were locked in the basement, you know, the, the library and information sciences faculty. So they lost a lot of their information. They researched all their things that they had. They were in their computers and their computers got flooded. Everything was full of water and it was, it was a loss. So whatever they had in there, it was gone. I need to remind you that at the time there was no Dropbox or anything like that. And maybe if they decided to back anything up they back it up and they left the hard drive right in there right so whenever something is really really important to you you know you don't back up and keep the backup in the same place you back up and you take that backup somewhere else distance is everything okay so be very careful about data loss and always try to anticipate what can happen because nowadays certainly your dog cannot eat your homework but it can disappear you know from your electronic device. Let's continue. So as I was saying, if you're gonna protect your data, you could also encrypt your data, okay? Because let's say all fails, somebody actually gets to your data, well, if it's encrypted, they're gonna have a hard time, you know, reading it. For example, encrypt your email, your files, certain websites, you know, like with HTTPS, so some, just somebody with the credentials can access it. You know, in the using wireless networks, you have different protocols that allow for encryption, you know, point-to-point -point encryption to protect you. And you have vi virtual private networks or VPNs, which are also encrypted. And what you would do with this is that if anybody is trying to get your stuff, this is actually something, this looks, you know, you see this guy over here? Well. Whatever you see behind it is actual text, it's encrypted text. And as you, if you try to read anything of, in there, you will see that you can't read a thing, right? That's because it's encrypted, okay? 
So if everything fails, if your physical security fails, if your logical security with firewalls and all those things and passwords fails, somebody's going to get in there. And what are you going to do? Well, maybe by the time they get in there, they're going to realize, man, this thing is encrypted. And if it's encrypted, they still cannot read it. Okay? So whatever it is, take care of yourself and protect yourself. I'll see you around.